<laughs> okay, the time is now 6.30, so we'll call the work session to order. Um, uh, we'll review the regular business and public hearing agenda items. We've got two proclamations that Bobby's brought forward, so we'll let him read those tonight. Mayor Pro Tem, if I could, if it would be possible, we've had an Eagle Scout complete an Eagle Scout project with a little free library over at the Senior Center. Uh -huh. And if we could add that as item C under ceremonial matters, I'm going to recognize him. Brian's done a nice little story on him. Okay. So if we could do that. His name is Mitchell Stevens. And if he's going to be here, he's also going to go ahead and do our pledge to the flag as well. Yeah. So if that's okay, we could change that to item C. All right. Anybody going to have a problem with that? Yeah. Do we need to amend the agenda, Tony, to do a ceremonial item? Y'all don't have to. That's not your normal place to amend it. But it, but it, it can be done by nomination. Okay. Everybody's in agreement. Okay. Uh, then we have the minutes. Uh, we've got quite a few department reports. Uh, we've got one public hearing, which is just the first reading on the sign permit. Are you going to do a youth commission or somebody you going to do? Yes, youth? Chris O'Donohue is going to be, be reporting. He's going to do that. Mm -hmm. Um. So anybody have any issue with, uh, okay, the we got the sign ordinance. Does anybody have any issues with that? You need to discuss. This is where we're just changing the definition of structure. And then, uh, the consent agenda is the policy regarding lien releases during acquisitions of property. If it's less than $15,000, we don't need to, to go through the mortgage holder. The consent of the lender so we just got that on the consent agenda. Everybody good with that? Mm -hmm. uh, new business, we've, we've got the uh, stormwater drainage system bid. We've got the annual resurfacing and then the purchase of a place motorcycle. Do I have any questions or comments or issues? So that'll bring up the four. Motorcycles. Hmm. How many motorcycles? Well, no, we're, we're going to sell the one we bought oh, it. We're going to give them the limit of all that he signed. <laughs> <laughs> we, we bought it used, yeah. and, and uh, it's got its, the repairs are going to be more than what the bikes were. So, so we, we, need to, sell we, it. Need, we need to get our city attorney in touch with Lawrenceville about that? <laughs> <laughs> so we're, still, we're still just passing it. Okay. Um, Butch, uh, on the public works, the Dickerson group, have you done service before with the city? What's that? The Dickerson Group, have we done service before? Yes. yes. And were there any complaints or problems, I guess, before we them doing stuff? Never. No. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then the other one was, uh, or the motorcycle, uh, the state sees assets account. That's where the money is being taken from to buy the bike. So that's basically state money, I guess, is where that comes from? And not that's any? where we see something and sell it. Uh, or if, if we see cash or we see like the cars that they, the court awards them to us and we sell them at auction and then that money goes into that account. Oh, okay. okay. And it can only and be used within for, yeah, the department okay. for public safety. And then uh, I was curious on the three different vendors, what does it go from like where the option was to the grand total? And then Killer Creek, Harley Davidson, the one they got it, it stays the same. But why does it make it go on? Is that like tax? Something we can figure that they don't make quotes on extra equipment that we didn't ask for. Oh, okay. That's on there but because if you look at the one between Cycle World and Killer Creek, they're yeah, pretty close, but Killer Creek is the low bidder. And Cycle World was building on, on was bidding on one they have in stock, but apparently it's more of a touring bike than a police package bike because they kept saying that had they could modified. They couldn't <laughs> provide all the things that were asked for. So that's probably what was killing. I mean, the bottom line is the, the grand total Killer Creek meets the specs and is the low price. Okay. All right, everybody good with all of that? Mm -hmm. That's our regular business meeting. Um, one thing on the, the um, 
Council reports and the Mayor Pro Tem report at the end of the meeting, Eric had caught me like last week just in passing and had suggested, him and Brian had talked about them coming up with some comments um, that they could write up for anybody who would like them. You can choose to use them or not. But just some comments just related to town center things, mm -hmm. things to help us help the public stay mindful of what we're doing. Um, so they're going to, yeah. they'll start providing some comments like that. Well, again. Why, just, and again, tonight, for tonight, it, I mean, that's fine. Why don't we just think about then adding them to the committee department reports? Periodically. Well, we could maybe do that too. But it's just I, this was just a way to use our council comments a little bit more effectively. You know, if you don't have a report, mm -hmm. or or if you're yielding your time to somebody else. Yes, that's right. That's right. Eric, I won't be reading y'all stuff tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's not. It's nothing do you that. Do I get a button though when your time is up? I wish you would have been shorter. I don't want anybody to think it's stuff that you have to do. So it's just there um, to maybe help us keep a message going out that we want to put right. out. And you Sometimes. may be able to stick them in periodically into that department report. Thing. Yep. And sometimes we know things you haven't heard yet that we be fine for public information. Yeah. And next meeting, the counselors will to move a lot faster. I know. Absolutely. <laughs> Glad I can help out. <laughs> okay. Anybody have any correspondence to review? No. Which city attorney's report? Nothing, except we would like to have an executive session with some two litigations. Okay. All right, so then we'll move on to our work session agenda. And first up, we have Rich Edinger with Clark Patterson Lee for our final stormwater report for the town center. Yeah, well, thank you very much. Um, wanted to um, just um, present uh, the other portion of the stormwater analysis that we did. There's another um, another portion of uh, of, of uh, the city that we looked at, and that's the SR-124 area. And uh, but um, so I have a much shorter presentation tonight than the last one. And um, but I thought I will just go over what the objectives were of, of this stormwater analysis. We want to uh, analyze the existing stormwater situation in the downtown area, and explain the, the stormwater management problem in this area, and then find some existing stormwater management resources that that are already uh, in the area. And look for opportunities to provide maybe some regional detention for, for future development. So why do we want to do uh, regional detention or sort of watershed scale detention? Well, it reduces the cost of development. Um, it provides certainty. So it kind of makes Snellville more attractive by reducing the regulatory and compliance burdens on uh, potential developers. Uh, maximizes developable land, and reduces future maintenance costs, and it could potentially be funded by future development activity. So this is an example. Um, this is a kidney dialysis center project right over here on Clower and Oak Road. Um, if, you, if you notice uh, here, the pond is underground. It's under their parking lot, and it's, it's this right here. Um, that's about 8,600 cubic feet of storage. And that probably cost in the neighborhood of $60,000. Um, so the development costs, you know, it's a significant <coughs> part of the land development, site development cost for this project. So if you could remove this by having some kind of regional facility, you know, that, that would make redevelopment of some of these areas more attractive. So, um, all right, so this is our overall study area, and it's split into seven drainage basins. This is the basin that we just added onto the study. It's, uh, I'm going to term it SR-124. That's 124 right, right there. Um, so the study area, though, is um, you know, kind of New London Plaza um, on the west side. Um, and um, over here, on, uh, it's the, uh, the old Walmart on the um, east side. And then SR-124 on the north, and then you got um, First Baptist Church and, and, and 
Snelly and I Methodist in, in, in this area down here. <clears throat> so we looked at really seven study points, uh, really eight study points, but uh, each drainage area uh, drains to a, a point that, we, that made sense to, to sort of analyze. Um, and so we've got study points all along the southern portion of the, of, of the uh, downtown area. And then one study point up here on the east side, which drains all of this basin number six right here. And then a study point right here at Harbor Oaks uh, on um, the SR1, all this SR124 drainage all, all comes down <coughs> to uh, Harbor Oaks, essentially. Okay. And we, we split all these up the, the, into additional sub-basins to do our analysis. So, um, I'll just recap the issues really quick. Um, basin number one, which is right here, um, that um, you've got regional detention already. This is sort of the New London Plaza area. Uh, you've got regional detention, but it's really not adequate. Um, SR-124 in that area overflows in the two-year storm. Um, basin number two, Carlin Vision area, um, Henry Clower overflows in the 50-year storm. That's not too bad. Um, basin three, um, regional detention already exists. Um, in fact, you just need to develop a storm drain system to convey water from future development to that pond. Um, and that's, you know, that's this area right here. And there's a detention pond, I think, that Georgia DOT built. Uh, that's sort of a wedge right down here, um, and that's a really massive pond. Um, and then Basin 4 is sort of the old city hall in Selma United Methodist Church, um, and the, the culverts under Poplar overflow frequently um, due to some clearance issues with the pipes down there. It's a very flat area down there, so I'm um, talking right, right, right down here adjacent to this to this pond, or it flows into this pond. What do you mean by clearance issues? Well, the uh, there's not much uh, topography down here, and so you can't fit a very large pipe under the road, and so those pipes then act really to constrict <coughs> the flow of water that can that can get through there. And that restricts everything upstream. It does. Yeah. It just right. starts ponding upstream more so. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Um, and then Basin 5 is the current City Hall, First Baptist Church. Um, the downstream most pond at, at First Baptist overflows in the two-year storm. Uh, and then culverts under Poplar, again, that, that ends up flowing to some of those culverts under Poplar. And they, they overflow frequently as well. Um, and Basin 6 was Eastgate Place, Snellville Oaks, Eastwood Drive. Myra Lane, Vine Street residential area. Um, that is that is this right here. This all flows you know, down this creek right here into a very large culvert um, just upstream of um, this residential subdivision. Um, um, so the, the, the strategy here, you know, a lot of that's going to get redeveloped. Um, we just need to protect the houses along Eastwood from any kind of redevelopment, stormwater impacts that, that might occur. And then Basin 7, which is um, what I'm here tonight to talk about, is uh, the SR 124 area. Um, the Harbor Oaks culvert overtops in the five year storm. There's a lot of flow going to that culvert. There's really not any opportunity to fix that problem. Mr. Mason has a property downstream where he's piped the stream. And so even if you sized up the culvert under Harbor Oaks, you'd still run into his property downstream. So, um, so that's not good news. No, it's not, it's not real good news. The other, the other issue, I, I think, from a, um, a redevelopment standpoint is you, you got a lot of retail up and down 124 on both sides of the road. Now, this shopping center, which is um, where H.H. Gregg is, you know, this has a very large pond. It's about uh, 229,000 cubic feet. Uh, and so that's a really good pond. That's, that's holding a lot of 
stormwater from from this shopping center right here. Um, the other ponds that exist are really up and down the east side of 124. All that retail. Uh, there's one there. There's one there. There's one there. And there's a fairly large one right there. Um, but all together, they only come up to about you know, not even maybe half the size of of that H. H. Gregg pond. So. Um, Anyway, all of that uh, stormwater on this side of the road goes under a 4x6 concrete culvert uh, under 124. And then it combines with the stormwater from the H.H. Gregg Pond and it flows through this. There's several residential lots in Harbor Oaks that are not developed. Uh, and it, it, and it, this area probably floods, quite frankly, because the flows are in the 700 cubic feet per second range. And so I'm sure that this, this whole area down here floods. There's just nobody, there's not a lot of folks down here or they don't have a front, a front seat uh, view of it. And so you probably don't, don't hear much about that. It's about the old forest. Uh, yeah, yeah, I believe so. Mm -hmm. That's right. Um, there's two. There's a residential house there and there. These both of these residential lots are empty, and this is Mr. Mason's property down here. Um, so the culvert. There's a there's a six by six box culvert that flows under uh, Harbor Oaks, and then it goes a little bit onto Mr. Mason's property, and then there's two 48 inch pipes that pick up that flow and convey it to about this point right here, where it opens up into. Uh, an open stream. Is that behind your old house, Bobby? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's... You ever that, see a flood? <laughs> well, the bottom lot, if you can go... Mm -hmm. That one? No. You follow that line all the way out, and that goes straight up. Next, that, that piece of property right there. Okay. And so it's... And also the lot on Bellwood, which is directly behind that, coming back this way. Yeah, right down. Coming, coming down. Okay. Anyway, that, that stream is the property <coughs> delineation, or that stormwater runoff stream right there, that one line cutting across right there, that one right there cutting across the other, that lot mm -hmm. is, the, is the line between those lots. Okay. So there's a lot of water in the one lot, the two, and both of them were undeveloped mm -hmm. when we bought them, uh, just simply because they were a little difficult because of that stream, but the the larger of those undeveloped lots is like 0.91 acres, and it just it stayed wet all the time, yeah. and it still stays wet all the time. I mean, and it's just yeah, there's a, there's an enormous amount of water that, right. that flows through here. Yeah, Wayne's got five acres. The the pieces that you see those individual lots behind there. Yeah. Right. No, He's, go back over here, Rich. Yeah, right there. Those you see running down Oak Road. Yeah. Yeah, Wayne owns. All of those okay. going back that way, and he's run sewer. He's actually run sewer. My oh, house okay. connects to sewer. Okay. My house is the only one in the subdivision, other than one the next one neighbor, mm -hmm. that connected to sewer because Wes Garrett thought he was having a problem, and he really wasn't. But nevertheless, Wes went ahead and connected to Wayne's sewer. Yeah. That's on Oak Road. Okay. Well, yeah. you, you, there's really there's not a lot of opportunity to to do any kind of regional detention anywhere because this is all residential property down here right and so um, this this area you know probably probably floods like I said um, oh it does and um, so anyway th this property is well controlled with this detention pond right here um, this property right here is well controlled with this pond and this this pond is not that old this pond is maybe five years old or so, five, seven years old. I mean, I remember when uh, yeah, so Snells came in and, and built that pond. Um, Is that the old Snell house there? Yes, it? that's right. That's right. Something like a dialysis center with an underground detention, could it be put in the residential area where that the undeveloped lots are? Well, it's, it's very low down here, so you don't actually need underground. You can do above ground. The problem is it's in line with the existing stream, and that's an environmental issue. Gotcha. You really got to be offline. Now, you could potentially you know, do something here mm -hmm. away from the creek. Right. The problem then is getting the stormwater there. 
you know, if we were trying to control what comes down the street right here, you you could probably do something right there. Um, well, that's higher on that side than but, the other right, side. So anyway. This is not right. part of the basin right, right. here. Right. Um, the bound the basin boundary is right there. Right. So even though this is low, it's not. I'm not going to catch them. There's a ridge right, right there. What if you redirect it off of the back of the HH Greg? I mean, can you redirect? I mean, can well, you right, maybe let it go two different places? Yeah, so right now that's the pond, the HH Greg pond, and then it comes down a pipe and it discharges right there. And it meets the culvert under SR 124 in this vicinity as well. I mean, hmm. that's, that's probably not correct right there. That, that's, they're saying that's an open ditch, but that's that's <coughs> rerouted somehow. Um, I think it's rerouted down and over. Um, Hopefully, they just build on top of it. Yeah. Right. That's right. <laughs> um, so the issues here really are, um, you know, the, this this concrete box culvert under Harbor Oaks. It's it's just undersized, and I'm not. I mean, if you have if you're not getting any complaints from folks. Um, you know, down in here, then I would say you're you're probably okay. It's probably flooding this area when it when it does flow really hard. Um, I wouldn't want anybody to develop these two lots right here. I mean that that could be a problem. Um, but if you're talking about redevelopment in the town center, you're you don't have an opportunity to redirect any stormwater out of. Upstream. That corner, right? You don't. That's that's right. Um, really, if you did a regional type pond, you'd have to come over here and do something over here. And and this stream right here conveys everything on this side of 124. You know, pretty pretty much this this brown line that you see right here. It all comes to, to this point right here. Well, effectively, you got three pieces of property, Butch. That that's going to somewhat affect. Is you going to get the old flower nursery and you've got the old florist and you've got next door to it the daycare and then the Mazawi empty lot there so you got those three pieces and that's where you got to do something with it anyway. Well the Mazawi empty lot's a little bit higher I've never seen that. It is a little bit higher but that water's going down into Harbor Oaks it's going the direction yeah. back down Harbor Oaks. But I don't think it's running all out on 124. But you've got the 124 yeah, properties and then the post office. Yeah, the post office is, let me see, right, the bottom right the here, yeah. yeah. That, that's the racetrack right there, and that's the small strip, mm -hmm. strip center on the corner. Um, <clears throat> so in all that water up there, is it coming down? To this, the bottom point this, this all flows like this right through and this flows right through. Like that. I mean, that's coming from up North Road. Yeah, you know, yeah all this that. all collects from North Road and SR 1.4. Yeah. But where does this go? Where, this, which way is that flowing? This, this flows in this direction okay, right here. Okay, so that's like that. Like that. Yeah. That's a problem. That's, that's yeah. the top of the basin right there. Okay. Yep. Got, this is a smaller culvert under, um, under 1.4. Basically, you got two flowing into one. Right. I mean, that's, that's right. For the sake of saying it, you got you don't have just one. You've got two coming from different yeah. directions flowing it, into one. It all converges here. Right. Essentially, the flows double when you get to the outflow of this pond. The, the the flow from here is about half is about the same as the flow from here, and so when when it all combines right here, you get you get about 700 right. cubic feet per second, which is a lot. Mm. Um, and, and then the break to the north that's dogwood. Um, this is, yeah, I think so. Yeah, that, that's that's dogwood up there. That's right. I think that's right. Yeah, yeah I think that's that, I think that's Texas Roadhouse right right there. Everything we wanted to know about stormwater detention. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Three easy lessons. So you have the concrete box culvert has a problem defined as it operates properly during the 100 year storm? Oh, I put that in there because I wanted to remind myself that, that this, the culvert under 124 is not an issue. It, okay. it passes the 100 year storm and, and um, 
you know, so that's probably actually more capacity than, yeah, that's owned by Georgia DOT, that culvert. And they're, they probably only designed that really for the 50 year storm, but it'll handle the 100 year storm. So. Which we're having twice a year now. Yeah, it seems, it seems <laughs> to be. That's right. Um, so, in summary, then, um, you got some opportunities in, in different basins. Um, basin one, uh, New London Plaza, there's existing stormwater. Uh, quantity issues, but there's some opportunity to create more detention capacity in a regional pond. Uh, it'll fall short of meeting the, the city standard, but nonetheless. Um, Basin 2, you know, overflows Henry Plow in the 50 year storm. There's really not much opportunity to address that issue. Um, Basin 3, Henry Plow has a regional pond that functions well, and redevelopment just needs to get their water there. So as those properties get redeveloped and whatnot. Um, they just need to build a uh, system to get their water down in the pond. And then Basin 4, which is Old City Hall, Snow United Methodist, has some issues downstream at Poplar Street, mainly due to clearance issues with the Poplar Street culverts. Um, and not really an opportunity, I don't think, to solve that uh, because of the topography down there. Um, Basin 5, which is the current City Hall, First Baptist, there's an existing stormwater quantity issue, but there's an opportunity to expand the First Baptist Pond into a regional detention pond that would address quantity and quality issues for a good bit of the downtown. I mean, Basin 5 really covers quite a bit of the, uh, the town center area. Um, and then Basin 6 is at Eastgate Place, Snellville Oaks, uh, Eastwood Drive. Uh, there's a lot of stormwater resources, and there's an opportunity to add a regional pond uh, right at the end of Eastgate, which we discussed you know, the last time. That could be used to help redevelop some of the town center properties. Uh, and then Basin 7, we just discussed, uh, Harbor Oaks Culvert, um, not much opportunity to resolve that issue. Um, any questions? Very thorough. What kind of resolution do we have? Can you go deeper or do you just have to go larger in it's, the conference? It, it's mainly you, you have an opportunity to get some vacant land to build regional ponds and then you have to <coughs> make sure you design them such that you can get the stormwater to those ponds from the redeveloped areas. So you're really looking for more surface area as opposed to more cubic area? Well, you're looking for more volume and um, <coughs> And you really do want to, you, you want to um, have it as deep as possible because then you can capture more, you know, um, more areas. Um, and and the town center really has a lot of stormwater infrastructure in it. It's really just a matter of creating some of these detention pond facilities to, you know, help with redevelopment and whatnot. So basically, we need a Lake Mason. Down yeah, there. right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is pretty much the story of Metro Atlanta, right? We're, we're, we straddle the subcontinental divide. We're on t basically on top of the watershed, with the exception of you know the Chattahoochee River. I mean, half of Gwinnett County is basically right at the top of the basin. Half of Gwinnett County flows to the Atlantic Ocean. The other half flows to the Gulf of Mexico. So you have very small streams, and anything you do to you know develop. Um, has a huge impact on the watershed because there's just not, you know, a huge river system flowing through Atlanta like most major cities of its size. So, appreciate it, Rich. You're welcome. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Yeah. Add this to our uh, knowledge base. Yeah. All right. <coughs> more confusion base. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty straightforward. Well, yeah. The question, the answer, is the hard part. Yeah. <laughs> Find the problem. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so item B is discussion of the Arts Commission independence. I think we have the issue resolved. Uh, I spoke to quite a few other cities, and nobody has an independent arts commission. And I think it's really a matter of time. the biggest issue is <coughs> we're not getting reimbursed in a timely fashion. So I, sp I spoke with Chris Saturday and and uh, <clears throat> June McKinley, and I, th I think the answer is for them, 
to time their purchases immediately prior to when the city runs checks. So they can come in, give them the receipt, and they get paid within a couple of days. It shouldn't be a problem. And I think that's because Butch chased down a couple of other options and there was nothing that anybody was really happy with. So I think if they can just, and I think frankly, for whatever reason, <coughs> I think some of the receipts were not turned in in a timely fashion. So then you miss, you're a week late getting there and then you're two weeks on the, on the check run. So <coughs> I think you probably need to, is that in every, is it like the 15th and the 30th? or is it? Every two weeks. Okay. Yeah, 26 times a year. So, so we just need uh, to make I, I sure they Chris's know. Chris's email, so <coughs> we can definitely coordinate with her. Yeah, just let her know when they are. I think that should go through. Let's see. All right. Uh, discussion of ZOA 1703, the sign ordinance amendment. Do we need to talk about that anymore? No, thanks. Everybody good? Uh, special use permit for churches. Who's taking that one? I've got some pass outs. So basically what we wanted to do is we've been working with the um, planning staff trying to put together the changes necessary uh, to solve the issues that have come up as regarding the um, churches in the BG district. And what we wanted to do is make sure that uh, any changes that are made are consistent changes throughout all the, all the zoning districts in the, in the city. And uh, in doing that, it's... Um, quite an involved process. So what I wanted to provide you all today is a basic memo that shows you the main things that will be changed. Now you're going to get full copies of the ordinance before they go for first reads, but this would be a good guide. I kind of, this is the cliff notes of the, uh, of the ordinance. So the two, the main changes are the first is in the definitions. Uh, one thing is we've standardized the term places of worship. So instead of referring to things as churches, synagogues, mosques, convents, monasteries, we had all those listed. They're now under one umbrella, and that is places of worship. And that's defined specifically as a specially designated structure or consecrated space where individuals or a group of people, such as a congregation, come to perform acts of devotion, veneration, or religious study. Temples, churches, synagogues, and mosques are examples of structures created for worship. A convent or monastery may serve um, as both the house of those belonging to religious orders and as a place of worship for visitors. And then what we also did was anywhere where it was, it was just the word church or anything, we said see place of worship. So the third definition that we changed was special use. And there was already procedures for how to go about applying for a special use, but it wasn't defined. And that's become kind of the key issue in the places of worship language. So we defined special uses as a use which is not allowed in a district as a matter of right, but which is permitted upon findings of the mayor and council and the issuance of a special use permit after recommendations by the Department of Planning Development and the Planning Commission that under particular circumstances for present such uses in harmony with the principal permitted use of the district and after public hearing. And that's really what we're trying to do. We want to make sure that the zoning is harmonious so that you know we don't have institutions that don't fit in with the businesses they're being stuck into. Uh, so that's the purpose of what we're doing. And basically, previously, places of worship were allowed uh, as a permitted principal use only in the CI zoning district, and then were conditional uses in the residential districts and in uh, the BG and HSBs. What we've done with that is to now 
um, take the residential language and apply that to be consistent with the BG and the HSB language. And that's what's on page two. Uh, there are a couple slight differences uh, to the BG and the HSBs. Whereas in the residential, you, you straight up have to be on a five acre lot. That's going to be your requirement to have a church, or a place of worship, excuse me, mm -hmm. in the residential. That's what it's been, and mm -hmm. we're still abiding by that. Uh, however, we're adding uh, in the BG and the HSB that if you don't have the five acres, if you can demonstrate the ability to provide the parking access, the recreational space, and the other requirements, then we say they're normally associated with the place of worship, the recreational area, those type of things, uh, then you can, you can apply for a special use permit if you don't have the five acres. So that provides those opportunities for consideration. Also, the residential provisions allow for uh, a three-year period to have a manufactured building that really wouldn't work in the BG and HSB, so we recommend taking that portion out. So those are the, the main changes we see there. Um, one other thing to uh, want to discuss, and we've been discussing this with, with planning, is uh, in coming to, to work with the UDOs, uh, the planning department has really had their eye towards moving away from the conditional uses and to have either principal permitted uses um, with an eye towards um, having less cases that have to be brought before the mayor and council. Um, that works really well probably for the residential uses, but the concerns we have um, with the special uses uh, versus conditional uses in the BG area are those ones that are always going to be issues. And those are going to be like used car lots, um, the internet car sales, those kind of things. Uh, so our recommendation, and this has not been changed at this point because that wasn't under our mandate. You all had asked us to, to look at the churches. But in getting into that, it's kind of led to looking at other issues and special use and conditional uses. Uh, so that's something that you all need to think about and let us know how far you want to go is if we want to move away from conditional uses in the BG and the HSB to a special use. And Tony, you might have, do you have anything you want to? Just, they, it really looked like it was intensely regulated items that went in the same category. You know, it's motorcycle shops, park stores, tattoo parlors. It was everything that most people put a, uh, we're, we're not really looking to attract a bunch of these businesses. You had a list of them, but they are all under conditional use in the BG category. And so, you also had some things in residential that were, again, traditional uses like cemeteries, and, and then public spaces and, and uh, uh, utility facilities like substations. Now those didn't seem to be quite so sensitive as to require a, an SUV review, but, but it sort of, cemeteries would, utility stations would. Mm -hmm. So, so it's, it's, it's really pretty easy to pull all of those things out of CUPs and into SUPs. In the longer in the longer term, planning department and your legal staff are going to just bump heads a little bit about the about the do we need SUPs because they do trigger hearings. Uh, you know they they want to they want to draft they want sort of draft conditions in there that that limit the the effects of some things. But and and probably where we have the discussion in front of you guys is there's some things that you you you, you just can't. Uh, decorated enough to make it palatable without an, without some SUP review of it. And so it's it's that. But we, we didn't want to jump out there and you, what it what it where you are now is you've got some weaknesses in, in people coming in and being able to do those things under C U P as a matter of right if they meet just a few conditions. <coughs> and and we're suggesting a change with with the with the uh, houses of worship and just pull it all out at one time and line them up as SUP. Is there any negative to being an SUP as opposed to a CUP aside from? It puts a burden on mayor and council, and it does to staff to certain extent. We have we have CUP but, hearings as well. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. That currently, the CUPs that we've used in the past, we've almost operated in, in a special use kind of fashion too, because we are hearing every one of them. Mm -hmm. So, I believe the advantage to the SUP is it allows you some written in. Uh, flexibility to consider more than just those five points or whatever it is for that option so it gives you a little more leverage to go for or against where 
like um, Tony was talking about in the future when we're talking about conditional uses coming out, not the ones that everybody has heartburn over, but the ones that are pretty simple that we always just kind of rubber hammer through that, you know, okay, good, you know, staff recommends approval, they meant these five things, but then the special uses are the ones that you guys would see, and those are the ones I believe Tony was referring to, the tattoo parlors, and then the churches, obviously, because of their ability to create situations in certain environments. So it's a fun, SUP is a funny thing because it, it, you know, you, you use them when it's intense use and it's going to interfere, you know, a, a, a garbage dump or, or a transfer station. Those those are always going to interfere with, well, uh, a, a church or house, of, a place of worship can do the same thing in any, in, in, when it comes into a normal business district because you got people and parking and kids and playing. So it's the same type of intensity of review, it's just affecting an area. And so you, you set that standard of, hey, this, this deserves that level of scrutiny. Then it pitches you into what's called a quasi-judicial review. So, so you're really using your judgment. You, you're able to. Supreme Court says, okay, if, if, if that's what's happening in these events, it's okay to have discretion in the review process, and so uh, it, 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 it gives counsel a little bit more flexibility to say no. And, and it it's, gives you flexibility to say yes, too, because you can, if, if, if you can show that you're going to have the recreational and space and, and facilities within the, the BG use in the shopping center that you would have in a five acre, the equivalent of that in that five acre space then see so, you know that it gives you the ability to say yes even though you may not have a baseball field you may have an indoor basketball court that's the equivalent yeah, but they're, but they're it really, really kind of takes some of the subjectivity out of it doesn't it it's more definitive it's definitive definitive in terms of standards and right. what you're trying to do right. you're, you have conflicting uses coming up right. against each other and therefore the one that's the intruder gets the higher scrutiny and and, 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 then, and then the appeal process out of that is much more difficult too. So you're helping your lawyers defend your, your cases. Well, I, think, I mean, the times that I've been, since I've been on council, it seems, you know, we've added things to the CUP process or the SUP process to the things that the public tends to have more opinions about, you know, the used car lots, the tattoo parlors, those types of things, so that should one of those want to come forward, it, it's an opportunity for a mayor and council to take a good review and kind of take the pulse of the public. To do I think it gives us a better shot if we turn them down. They have, as you said, fewer options they have. Yeah. And within those parameters. Right, exactly. yeah. Okay. So we've got instruction then to review this. Any comments? Shoot to Chuck? And Tony, and we'll plan on putting this on our for a first. And you're going to are we, are we ready for a first read or next for next session? Time, we have the draft. draft. It because the text has to go through the planning Okay. So we'll go on our regular calendar. We've got to schedule other items. Okay. We got it. Okay. So then we'll be getting the draft. Is there, there any the leeway time. on the frontage requirement? Tell us. Yeah, it's what y'all think, you know, you're, you're setting the standards. So. Okay. Well, I want to look at that because we had the proposed cemetery slash house of worship on <clears throat> Skyland and Temple Johnson. From what I could see, that's in the county. And but from what I could see, it didn't, it was in compliance with the county road requirements. And there's only a two lane road either way. And if you have a, if you had a funeral procession or any major event, you're going to be backed up. Not that we have traffic problems, but you would have traffic problems. <laughs> uh, I, I think we need to have. We do that we need, for a homecoming parade down Scotland. So. <laughs> I think we need. To, it's not like we don't do it. <laughs> I think we need to restrict some of those roads. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. Moving on. The item E is what's on our consent agenda, which is the resolution creating a lien release policy. Mm -hmm. Does anybody have any questions or want to discuss that before we go in a vote? Okay. Straightforward. 
Uh, Butch is going to give us an update on the FEMA reimbursement for Tropical Storm Irma. I just asked him to kind of run through this because he had mentioned to me that he was preparing all the paperwork for it a couple weeks ago. And honestly, I didn't even realize that we were mm -hmm. applying or entitled to it. So I just wanted him to just update everybody so we all had that information. Basically, when uh, all we found out that all 159 counties were included in the uh, uh, federal disaster area that made us eligible for reimbursement for our cleanup costs and some personnel costs. So uh, I asked uh, uh, Roy and Lisa and Gay to start documenting um, everything. Keep you know, they, they filed good reports on the number of hours that our responses uh, um, took up with our personnel. Uh, we made some changes over at the recycling center where we allowed extra um, um, debris to be brought in free of charge, and we kept track of the numbers there. And uh, um, and I can I can tell you that the, the county's emergency management folks they, they, they do a good job. I, I I think you probably have the same uh, history with them, but Greg Swanson and those folks they stay on top of things. So um, the it, being in touch with them, and they the next thing they did was they got GEMA in and they set up a meeting over at uh, the Environmental Heritage Center where a lot of regional, a lot of governments came from all over the region. They basically said, this is what you've got to do to stay eligible. And <clears throat> the first step was to complete this uh, request for public assistance form in, you know, it's the, it's the federal government, so you have to do it in triplicate and you have to do it the right way. So, uh, um, and it had to be completed by, by a certain date, and we, we got something from Greg Swanson at, at EMA, which said as of 2 p.m. on the 13th, uh, Friday the 13th, following local governments have submitted a request for public assistance and, and been approved. Duluth, Decula, Lawrenceville, Sugar Hill, Gwinnett County, Berkeley Lake, Peachtree Corners, and Snellville. So we have met the, you know, the first requirement, if you will, um, maintaining our eligibility. We feel like we have all the records that we need, and so we think that is, that's coming next. We'll have to submit the type of documentation on the forms that they, they request. And you know, it's not going to be a lot of money, but... Uh, uh, what are we talking about? Maybe. We're talking about probably you know, 30, 40,000 dollars. Okay. You know, so, uh, it's uh, uh, we get, we get cost, a, I just don't want it to cost us fifty to get thirty. It's, yeah, that's to get a, uh, <laughs> to get a fair amount of reimbursement. This and, is the federal government. They're yeah, here to help. Yeah, I just, I'm just <laughs> yeah, I'm just cautious. <laughs> so anyway, it's uh, uh, we are, you know, we we we've crossed every hurdle. We're waiting on the next step, and uh, uh, <clears throat> we'll probably set up a meeting shortly. But uh, uh, so we're we're in we're in line for for the, a reimbursement so, uh, dollars that we can we can utilize. So. Very good. All right. So now we got our ongoing projects. Um, ongoing projects. The uh, town center plan. Um, several discussions have taken place. Um, when uh, uh, we we thought we may have Tony, I guess we really don't have a need for an executive session with the. Uh, with the delay on a couple of items, or uh, do we need to go ahead? I, I was just going to brief them on the, okay. the email, just to, just to sort of break the ice. No okay. decisions to be made. Just, a short executive session, then. Uh, <clears throat> the Town Center Joint City and County Plans, we received the uh, documentation from the county on what they're looking for in their library. We added it to the RFP. It's completed. It's in the, the county is reviewing that. I hope that uh, we can get that out on the street this week, uh, next week, if not, uh, 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 if not this week. So uh, that will be a, a, a good step forward uh, for us. Uh, and the county uh, came through there in the, in the end. Um, public relations marketing, uh, still working on the uh, stormwater information brochure. Um, one note I wanted to make, uh, it, it, it's that FM is farmer, farmer's market. Uh, I feel like the, the, the city presence, which we appreciate uh, the ability to, to have uh, representatives out there and have a booth, I think that was well received by the public. We got a lot of, 
lot of questions from people. We had a chance to provide information in different, uh, uh, from different departments, and I thought that was a, a, a positive PR move. So, uh, and we, we, we will have that stormwater draft done by the next meeting. <clears throat> Town hall meetings, there's really nothing to, to report there. Um, there is a, kind of a connection to the 78124 project, which we'll talk about in, in a minute. Uh, the UDO drafting Caleb and his team, um, I, I think we've got a, uh, a percentage of completion. What, what did Caleb say today? 50%. Okay. We're and then we're waiting on an update from Pine, but I, which is the engineering portion of it. I believe we're going to start taking the completed sections as they come and reviewing them so we can stay ahead. So we can be reviewing while uh, they're, they're completing their drafts. So uh, it's, it's technical work. It's uh, a lot of tedious work, but I, I, I think everybody will be satisfied with the document. You'll have plenty of chances for input on that. Um, the roundabout construction and talking to uh, Tony and Shep, there are quite a few closings, I think, scheduled. Um, working once more on um, the, the one parcel which you're familiar with at Ridgedale, and there's one other outstanding uh, where we've made the contact with Ms. Hudson, and uh, hopefully we can, um, we can nail her down. It's just a matter of um, a number. You know, we have one and she has another one. We aren't that far apart. Uh, <clears throat> 78 and 124, good news there. Uh, we finally have a job superintendent. Uh, we've been in touch with him, uh, and uh, he has been very specific as far as what they're going to be doing. Uh, they've had survey crews on site uh, off of the roadway for m and Shopping Center as well as over on the church side. Uh, that's going to continue. Still, he says that there will not be any disruption in traffic flow for quite some time. Um, and we reminded him that in the contract itself, uh, there are restrictions on the hours they can work in the roadway. Uh, westbound, they have to be, they cannot start until after 9 a.m. And eastbound, they have to be done by 4 p.m. So uh, uh, that, that should help a little bit. He's very, uh, uh, very positive as far as uh, detours and signage. Uh, I think they're going to be very good to, to work with. Uh, I also mentioned the, the connection to the town hall meetings that, you know, we, we, we try to keep the information out there in various forms, but, uh, um, you know, down the road we probably would like to have a, a, a town hall where, where we can take some questions when he, and he said, just, you know, let, I've just been assigned, let me get more comfortable with the project. Make sure my DOT brothers and sisters are uh, are on board. The next thing they're going to do, they're going to have another utility meeting here at uh, uh, at City Hall. And I said we just just make sure that we get notified about everything, every change, anything that uh, is coming up. Because right now we're on a a slow, easy course. We want to know what what well ahead of time uh, what changes are planned there. So I think they'll be good to uh, uh, good to work with. Uh, <clears throat> really, uh, uh, nothing to report on business retention and attraction. The SPLOSS program, just this afternoon I received the, uh, the City County IGA for the transportation projects, uh, which is the set-aside money uh, for the, 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 the three pod projects. I haven't even had a chance to look at it. It's, uh, it's Wisteria and 124. It's the uh, uh, intersection, the turn lane at, uh, um, I guess, uh, um, there uh, just north of uh, I guess Ridgedale and uh, uh, Ridgedale and, and uh, putting a tur right turn lane in there. And uh, uh, so we'll give us a chance to look at that. We'll have that on the next agenda. And uh, um, we really do not have a, uh, an update when it comes to... Uh, higher education, no discussions have taken place there. Um, several things have, uh, do we need to talk about the potential called meeting? Yes. Um, several things have come into the planning department recently that uh, I think it's important that mayor and council have input and discussion on um, another proposal on the um, old Ryan's 
Um, we have a very important uh, task ahead of us. You know, we've talked about UDO. We also have a comprehensive plan that a major update is, is required of us. Uh, we need to talk about that. Uh, <clears throat> we probably, uh, uh, it's probably a good time with the uh, uh, church um, regulation discuss place of worship discussion. So uh, um, since we have three weeks between this meeting and our next meeting, um, it would be good to have a called uh, work session where we can have a short executive session as well as discuss these public matters that have come to the planning department. Mm -hmm. And I was, um, the, the middle of those two weeks, uh, three weeks is uh, uh, like Thursday, November the 2nd. Uh, I don't know what your schedules are like. Uh, maybe it's six o'clock. Let me check. Okay. I got some problem with that. Got some things for What's that? What Thursday day? the second. Uh, potential uh, mayor and council call meeting. Thursday, November second. So y'all check that and just let us know. It's fine with me. Okay. Um, all right, and we need, we've only got five minutes for exec session. Ooh, four minutes. Time flies. It can wait till the second. It really can. Our power circulating in the door is just an adjustment in terms of numbers. Okay. Okay. okay, so we'll adjourn the work session. I will be in the meeting next.